So I, I appreciate everyone showing up. Thank you for coming to our response time um, for the next few minutes. Um, if I haven't had the pleasure of meeting you, my name is Tim, and I work here at Brindley Mountain Fire Apparatus. Um, I did want to remind you that if you want to submit a prayer request, you can do it at response time at firetruckmall.com, or you can, uh, you can plug it in the chat um, at the side of this window. Um, before we start, let me uh, say a, a short prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time to just spend a little bit of time in your word and just talk about you. And Father, I pray that you would do the talking uh, and your words uh, would be used. And I just pray your blessing over this time. I pray your blessing over everyone represented here. In Jesus' name, amen. So um, my wife and I watched, uh, have been watching a, a series called The Chosen. And, and man, it is really good. And it's challenged me to dig in more into the word. And it really has helped me um, be able to understand a little bit more about Jesus and his time here on earth because honestly, my view of Christ was probably very sanitized, sanitized I guess you could say. Um, so watching uh, this, this show called uh, The Chosen has been really helpful in me um, just kind of understanding more about Christ and his time here on earth, his ministry on earth. And one of the things we watched recently was the story of the leper being healed by Jesus. And it's found in three of the four Gospels. It's found in Matthew chapter 8, verses 1 through 4, Mark chapter 1, verses 40 through 45, and Luke chapter 5, verses 12 through 16. And after watching the show, I began to dig in a little bit, and I read more about it. And, man, each one of the Gospels only has, uh, what, four four or five verses about uh, the leper being healed by Jesus, but it is full of meat um, and just so much. There's so rich. And I'm going to read the, the version out of Luke chapter 5, verses 12 through 16. And this comes out of the NLT. In one of the villages, Jesus met a man with an advanced case of leprosy. When the man saw Jesus, he bowed with his face to the ground, begging to be healed. Lord, he said, if you are willing, you can heal me and make me clean. Jesus reached out and touched him. I am willing, he said, be healed. And instantly the leprosy disappeared. Then Jesus instructed him not to tell anyone what had happened. He said, go to the priest and let him examine you. Take along the offering required in the law of Moses for those who have been healed of leprosy. This will be a public testimony that you have been cleansed. But despite Jesus' instructions, the report of his power spread even faster and vast crowds came to hear him preach and to be healed of their diseases. But Jesus often withdrew to the wilderness to pray. To pray. Um, so back in biblical times, leprosy was considered a very serious disease uh, that had a lot of social and religious implications. We're not completely sure that the leprosy spoken of in the Bible is the same disease that we call leprosy today. In fact, we call it Hansen's disease, not leprosy. But it doesn't really matter for the stories of uh, Jesus and healing of the lepers. Um, leprosy was very contagious, uh, is very contagious, and lepers were considered unclean, and they were separated from others. The law required that they be completely excluded from society, so they had their own little, you know, places where they lived, their encampments, I guess you could say, away from um, people who didn't have leprosy. Um, in fact, they they weren't uh, they weren't called um, the man or woman with leprosy. They were called lepers, uh, as if the leprosy had not only stolen their um, interaction with people but it also stole their identity they were they were outcasts they were shunned by the community and it was their job as they walked through town to to yell unclean to let everybody know their condition so nobody would get near them they weren't able to work because of their condition so they had to rely on people's generosity and their kindness and 
and people, since people wouldn't get close to them, they probably threw or tossed them whatever, you know, money or, or food or whatever. And if anybody accidentally touched a leper, um, that person was restricted from worshiping at the temple until they'd been ceremonially cleansed. And, you know, there was another interesting bit about lepers that I learned in studying this. There's before this time when Jesus healed the leper, there was only one other instance of a leper being healed. And it was of a Gentile. And that was when Elisha, when Naaman came to Elisha and um, Elisha sent him to dip in the Jordan seven times. And if you want to read that story, it's found in 2 Kings chapter 5. So up until this point, Naaman, a Gentile, was the only one who had ever been healed of leprosy. Uh, in fact, a, a teaching had developed among the Jews that said uh, uh, only, a, only the Messiah could heal a Jew with leprosy. Nobody else could. So back to this leper described in, in Luke chapter 5. Um, he, was, he was desperate, and he broke this code of, you know, stay away from people by approaching Jesus and he was he was desperate and Jesus violated the the law by touching the leper so the leper the leper didn't doubt that his faith in Jesus was his power was absolute he was absolutely determined to reach Jesus and despite the the huge crowd despite his disease coming before Jesus was his only hope so he did whatever was necessary to overcome the disadvantages. And Jesus healed him. So thinking about this miracle, what can we learn from it? Jesus reached out and he touched people with his immeasurable love. And he did it without uncertainty. He embraced the leper without hesitation. The leper who was considered unclean. And before this time, uncleanness had always been associated with the uncleanness flowing to the clean and up until this point that was always the case but in this point Jesus touched him and the cleanliness from Jesus the healing power of Jesus flowed to the uncleanness um, and you know where he told the the leper to go before the priest and the priest would examine him and and declare that he was healed of leprosy uh, the priest had never done this before because this was the first Jew healed of, of leprosy. And they would have learned it in their studies. They would have memorized it. They would have known what to do. But can you imagine their surprise when somebody actually showed up that had been healed of leprosy? Um, and then they had, they probably had, maybe they had to check their scrolls and make sure they were doing it right. But Jesus embracing the leper um, with, with no hesitation. And just thinking about the leper, it, the scripture says he had an advanced case of leprosy, so we don't know how many years he'd been a leper. But when was the last time somebody may have hugged him, kissed him, held his hand, shook his hand, or even just reached out and, and touched him? How long had it been? And how he must have longed for a physical touch from another human being. We're made to be social and were made for that. Um, but he reached out and he sought the embrace of the Savior. And the Savior embraced him and healed him. And I, I just think that the touch of Jesus was an outward sign of compassion in, in the heart of, of God for this man as well as, as all of us. We're God's children. And it's because of this incredible love that he reaches out to make contact with us. It doesn't matter what we've been, what we've done, or where we've been. It doesn't matter, um, you know, how unclean our heart or soul is. He loves us, and he's reaching out to touch us. He's reaching out to embrace us. Um, and if you, if you don't know him, if you think you've done too much or you're too bad to, that he would ever love you, that's not true. Jesus loves us. God loves us no matter what. And he desires a relationship with us. Um, if, you, uh, if you have any prayer requests, uh, you can throw them in the chat um, at the side of the window here. I'll give a second or two for that. Um, and again, you can always email us at uh, um, response time at firetruckmall.com. And we're glad to pray over those requests. Let me pray us out. 
Heavenly Father, thank you for this brief time in your word. And God, thank you for loving us so much. No matter what we've done, no matter where we've been, um, no matter how unclean we are, you reach out, you touch us, you embrace us, and your holiness, your cleanness flows from you to us, not from us to you. Thank you, Father, for all you've done for us um, and all you're going to do. We love you, Jesus, and we pray all of these things in your holy name. Amen.